day of Mama's death, I didn't cry. And I didn't speak to anyone about my feelings. Papa! Papa! What's wrong, Trez? <laughs> I really wanted to create a, a period film that contemporary audiences would find engaging. Mama! Mama! Please feel my little one. Our target audience originally was Catholics who were familiar with Therese. But as the project began to take shape, we soon realized, in the spirit of St. Therese, that this film was for everyone. No. Hard. Like this. Would you tell me, Sister Therese, what attracts you so much towards me? Every time I look at you, I see you smile. I'm smiling because I'm, I'm happy to see you. When I first thought about writing a screenplay on St. Therese, of course, I related very much to her character. And I was a lot younger then, so I always imagined that I would play the role. But then I grew up, and I ended up playing her mother instead. <laughs> oh, Mama, I wish you would die. Oh, Therese. She was a, a young girl that was pampered by her family uh, out of love. And she became a spoiled brat. Celine, there's nothing in the slippers. Go upstairs so that Father Christmas may bring you the presents. But hurry, it's late. Well, thank God this is the last year. She's getting a bit old for this. Therese goes through a deep spiritual conversion. She grew up. She suddenly understood what was important in life was to give to others and to think about other people's feelings instead of her own. It's for you, the Bishop Seal. Come on. I play Celine Martin, which is Therese's closest sister. They're close in age. Uh, in the film, they're two years apart, and they are like best friends. <laughs> While I wanted to be historically accurate, at the same time, I really Let's felt that Therese's day-to-day -day life, and especially her interior struggles, needed to be accessible. So that'll be 23A in the morning. Pre-production for the film took our already uh, busy offices and turned them upside down and made it into absolute chaos at times. But it really was exciting to see the transformation. Pauline is lost to me. My director of photography, Lord Ambrose, was a central figure in the development of the look of the film. You're going to follow your heart. He'll think it's because of Pauline. What we did is in the pre-production, we sat together and we went through the script and I made my notes, you know, as to how we want to approach this film. I was going through this um, old paintings, uh, Monet, in war, studying that period. But I didn't want it to adapt the exact period. We want to get some kind of nuance in this film. The props were made down to the last detail. The Virgin of the Smile. That statue we found in Texas. And when it was brought out, we actually fabricated you know, the crown so just from the historical right photographs. And it was a perfect match. couldn't shoot in Europe. So we had to really recreate the monastery in the Pacific Northwest um, using our original uh, blueprints and historical photographs. I found Lindsay, the character for Therese. I was walking by the door of the casting director and I saw the tape. I can't resist his love any longer. It uh, didn't have that industry uh, savvy attack or approach. Uh, and because of that, uh, what really came out is she had a purity and an honesty in her delivery. A million things went through my mind at once. I was, I didn't believe it at first. It was, it kind of sunk in after a while. And then I was excited and scared. Here they were doing this huge project. I walked on the set, huge camera equipment, tons of people. I learned that day film is largely a technical art. 
I hadn't really realized that before. The technical people have to feed off of the actors, and the actors have to feed off of the technical people, whereas in theater I'd experienced it as two separate worlds. Here we go, fly please! This was my first feature film as a director, and I, of course I was fairly nervous on the first day of shooting. All the details and demands of the talent and the crew, uh, it was pretty overwhelming. But I think after the first week, I believe, after seeing the dailies, I, I really realized that uh, not only were we getting outstanding footage, but that uh, we were also staying on track to finish the film. Okay, well, let's do a new setup. One thing I really appreciated about Leonardo's directing was that he is an actor. He was good about giving verbs as opposed to giving feelings or as opposed to saying, I want you to be happy. He would say, what is Therese really feeling in this scene? Why is she feeling that? Where does this happen in the story? And he was also very encouraging uh, every single day saying, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. By the time we shot the river scene, all the family, all the girls, had really grown close together. Lindsay and I are very close, and we had a great time filming together. We spent so much time together on set, and we really, we really did kind of form a sister relationship. I knew that creating the feeling of a strong family unit was essential to, to the film, to the success of the film. And I think the character of Louis, the papa that I played, really touched my heart because he was such an example of fatherhood, of parenthood really. Making this film was one of the hardest things oh, I've ever okay. done in my life. It required months of time spent away from my family, my friends. And it was a huge ready. test. They're waiting. They're waiting. Let's go. It was like being in a, in some ways, in a military operation uh, down in the submarine, and I was just trying to get up to the surface. Action! I say background. After the uh, principal photography was complete, we went to France and Rome, and that's where we got shots of the Vatican and the French countryside. Father, if you say yes, everyone will agree. Mademoiselle Martin, that is quite enough. I want to be a saint, but I feel so helpless. The rough assembly was two hours and 50 minutes long. And the next phase was to go through and shape the story. A lot of times what keeps people with a film and keeps them interested in a character isn't what they do know, it's what they don't know. My editor had, a, I think, a very consistent approach in telling the story. And both of us wanted to really continue that tension, that dramatic thread throughout the film. Sister Marie Therese Sokol was my composer, which is a very dear friend, and a, she's a cloistered Carmelite nun, and uh, this meant we had to have special arrangements just in order for us to, to work together. But I, I do believe that she is the first nun ever to compose a score for a motion picture. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. The score was recorded by an orchestra in Seattle, Washington, and was conducted by Mr. Sokol, who at the time was 83 years old. And so we don't want to say it until she kind of just gets over there. Working with Lindsay was remarkable is, uh, in the voiceovers look, because the impact they'll have in the movie itself, I think it reveals her inner relationship with God. I want to be a saint, but I feel so helpless. As far as seeing Christ and the feeling that she gets, it's tough to show it visually. 
So you have to add a little bit more sonically. And some of these were just pads down below, almost a tingle, but you're not sure exactly where it's coming from. But she's looking up at the crucifix and you know, she's spreading her hands and you're really feeling more of what she's going through at that moment. I like the silence before a big moment. If you do something in sports, there's always like this quick moment of silence where everything disappears. And there's certain things in films, if you can create an element where the audience is taken away, but all of a sudden something comes back and it just Attack! really, really wakes them up Attack! to something. Attack! When Leonardo and I locked picture, we were quite happy with what we had. But as always, we knew that the audience would have the last word. I'm very glad to welcome Leonardo de Filippis and his film to Chicago and uh, I look forward to viewing it with you. Thank you all very, very much. I didn't think I was gonna cry, but I used a lot of Kleenex. This movie helps us. We need this movie in America and the world. This is just fantastic. Everything about it was wonderful. It was just so simple and so powerful. It was just very beautifully portrayed. I enjoyed it very much, even though I cried much of the way through it. We make it a mirror, in a sense, of what's in us. It was really powerful. It's a huge challenge, but I think they did a very good job. It's a really good film. I just love crying because it was just so powerful and I'm so excited to think about all the lives that they're going to continue to touch. It is just so beautiful. I just love the photography and the, just the simple message of it. Well, it was a beautiful movie and it was more emotional than I thought it would be, particularly towards the end. Uh, basically, the main word is emotional. It just kind of blows you away. It was uh, incredible. Just, just beautiful. It was a marvelous film. I just uh, enjoyed it so much. Finally, I've seen a film that is worth seeing without any of the violence and, and everything else. Oh, it was so wonderful, beautiful film. The release of this film is so important right now at this moment in history because we're seeing two elements. One, where we're filled with great chaos and uh, confusion, especially with the world's state as it is. And the other is in our own cultures where we're so busy, where we're so distracted with material things, that here is a person who can help us focus. I must speak to you, it's urgent. Do you have a moment? I think the young people especially will identify with this film and with this story. Therese was 15 years old when she entered the convent. She was 24 when she died. She was young all of her life. Being a saint doesn't mean being perfect. Are you all right? It must have been the smoke. It means accepting our weaknesses. That was her message. Very good. And that's what Therese wants to share with us. My God will never leave me, I'm sure. He's never abandoned me. God will not abandon me. I think that resonated with me through the whole movie. I asked Therese specifically, don't abandon me so that we can finish this film and we can do you honor and we can do you justice. <laughs>